Hello and welcome to Norway. So it's the last day of my holiday in Norway. Going home tomorrow, so I'm just about to start packing. You should see the mess on the bed next to me. Slightly funny kind of filming angle. Um, I've tried to stack my phone up on things as much as I can, but this is as high as I can get. So I'm leaning forward a slightly so you can see all of me. Um, I'm going to show you what I've been knitting on this holiday. I'm going to show you what I've bought on this holiday. And I'm going to share some footage from three yarn shops, um, boat trip in the Oslo Fjord, and a couple other bits and pieces. Um, can't quite remember everything I filmed now. So I hope you enjoy today's video. If you're new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns at each knitting workshops online and in person and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing. I normally film on my phone but I normally do most of the editing on my laptop and then I upload it to YouTube on my laptop. Today, because I want this to go up tomorrow, Thursday, I'm going to edit it and upload it from my phone. But I don't know because when I upload it on my laptop, it takes hours. Like half an hour video can take like most of the day. And when I upload it on my phone, which I have done a few times before, especially during Vlogtober and Vlogmas, when I or if I'm on holiday, I don't know whether the quality is as good. So I normally watch YouTube on my phone. Um, I never ever, well ha hardly ever watch on the telly and I did try and go back and watch a couple of my old videos I knew were uploaded on my phone on that television but if our internet isn't very good, which it frequently is not, um, it reduces the quality anyway so let me know if you normally watch me What's the quality like on this? Let me know if you're watching on a phone, tablet, laptop or television and whether the quality it's better or worse than normal because I'm thinking if it's just as good as normal if I do it all on my phone then why am I doing it on the laptop it's so much easier to edit it and upload it on the phone on my laptop it takes forever to save it and upload it so if I can do it on my phone that'll be easier but I'm assuming the quality is poor on the phone and that's why it's quicker Anyway, tell me in the comments if you watch me regularly. So on the way up to London, I did a lot of knitting on the train, did a little bit at the airport. So I will show you a little clip from my travel day now, and then I'll come back and talk about what I was knitting on that trip. So on the trip to London, I cast on for a new um, cow or rework of an old cow, really. So this is Spectrum Fibre. I got it earlier this winter, I think. 
What did I get it last year? I can't remember. It's no, I got it earlier this winter. I'm sure I shared it in February on my um, podcast. So it is spectrum fiber, double net, 100% superwash merino, uh, in the color Love Hearts, and I really like that color. It's got pinks, a bit of purple, a bit of yellow. Really nice colour. So I've got a pattern called Portobello, which I talked about in the last podcast, and I'm re-netting it. I wound the yarn on the train, as you saw, and um, I made this a little bit different. I've seen cows that kind of have like a flap that goes down at the front. I think quite often they're called dickies. Dickies? I don't know. So I decided to try that. I need to actually put this on a barber cord today and try it on before I knit more. So basically I knitted this bit separately. Then I knitted that bit separately, and that's all I got done on the way here. I thought I would have got more done, but I didn't. Even though I did knit on the train, not the whole way. Um, I knitted a bit at the airport, and I knitted a bit on the flight. And then yesterday, we went on a boat trip in the Oslo board, which I'll show you some more later. And I joined this to work in the round, so I'm now working in the round. And I did all of that knitting yesterday. So I got quite a lot of knitting yesterday um, on this boat trip. I'd hoped to, we also sat in a coffee shop for a little bit at the end of our day in Oslo. So um, I did some knitting then. I had hoped to knit on the train home. It was packed. It was standing room only, proper rush hour, capital city travel, which I'm not used to and I did not enjoy. <laughs> I didn't get a seat till we got to the stop before our stop. And I was in a lot of pain. Uh, my knees were hurting, my hips were hurting, my back was hurting, and I was in a lot of pain, so standing was basically torture. Clearly, I don't look old enough for people to get up and offer me a seat yet. So anyway, that's how far I've got. I need to take this off and put it on the barber cord this afternoon, just try it on, make sure I'm happy with this flat thing. Because I feel like sometimes with a cow, it just kind of comes to about here. And sometimes I'm happy with that, but sometimes I feel like if you can be further down, so that's why I've tried to do this, and we'll see how that works out the original pattern didn't have that um so when i finish this i will have the data pattern and everything i've been using my color clutch for this because it's not too big it's just big enough for this project and i've got like my spare needles and stuff there because i need to change needles soon so even though our day in oslo was yesterday so it's the last day i'm going to show you now what we did in oslo we went on a boat trip and um on the Oslo Fjord. There is the, I think it's the B1 route. It's like a, um, basically a boat bus, I guess. And if you get a travel pass, we bought a 24 hour travel pass, which was zone one, two, and three, because where my parents live is zone three, Oslo is zone one. And we got a travel pass, which gave us free travel to and from Oslo on the train and free train, boat, tram, and metro in Oslo. So we got the metro to the Arkebrygge um, harbour area in front of the um, city hall and we got the B1 ferry there which do an hour long route around the inner Oslo fjord. There's, I think it stops at four islands. Um, there's quite a few little islands in the inner Oslo fjord and they have little summer cottages on them. Um, there's one island um, which is stops up twice. It's the first and the last stop. You can get off and you can get back on again. They run once an hour and the trip takes about 55 minutes. Um, and we've done it quite a few times now. It's quite relaxing. And I spent alternate between sitting inside knitting and going outside and uh, doing videoing a bit for you to show you now. So I'll show you that now. You'll also see quite a bit of the skyline of Oslo. There's one building you'll see which has like two towers. Um, that's the city hall and to the right of that up on the hill is the Arkeshus castle um, or fortress I guess it is which is um, one of the main kind of defense things in Oslo or was there's a museum there I haven't been there for quite a few years <music> Thank you. 
after we went on the boat trip, we um, went to a shop called Heimen Husfliden. The Husfliden is a chain of stores in Norway. It's kind of like arts and crafts and they don't just do knitting stuff. They specialize in national costumes and they do a lot of other craft related things as well. And in the Glass Magazine, the department store in Oslo, I'll link everything below by the way, um, they have a um, Heimen Husfliden department. They sell a few sort of handy craft things, traditional Norwegian crafts and things, like ready-made sweaters and things like that. And then they have a large yarn department. Now, the yarn looks very colourful and pretty. A lot of it is Norwegian wool. They sell a lot of Vidauma, which is a Norwegian yarn company. And they had Sun, um, Sunnes Garn, which is another Norwegian yarn company. And I can't remember whether they had other brands there. Um, a lot of it looks really pretty, but it's Norwegian wool, which is not very soft. So I looked, went up to some of the skeins, especially the ones that were hanging like skeins on the wall. I thought, oh, that looks so pretty. And then I touched it and I was like, no, there's no way I'm having that anywhere near my skin because it would just be too uncomfortable. But I did buy something. Um, I knitted this sweater, this pink one, um, last year, which you'll know. And if you've been watching, I had to re-knit the sleeve recently because it kind of wore away, the pink fluff wore away. I'm not that happy about how that yarn's worn. I mean, it's a lace weight yarn, um, alpaca silk with a little bit of merino, and I knitted on quite a loose tension, and I worn it a lot, but I feel like the pink fluff is kind of wearing away. So I got this, it's the same company, this is 100% super fine alpaca, and it is um, 175 meters per 50 grams. So I got those two colors. I'm planning to come back in September. I am thinking about re-knitting this sweater, either holding two strands double, or maybe trying this yarn. So that's why I bought these two balls. It's not quite the same pink. It's a little bit, oh, it's not far off, a little bit darker. Um, this is 100% alpaca, it's a little bit fluffy. Um, I thought I would use this and swatch with at home and just to see what it's like. And then if I decide I want to knit a sweater in it, I can order it for next time I come. Um, which is what I did with this and I had it delivered to my parents house um, when I got here last September so that's what I bought yesterday I also bought like a little pack of um, those barbecue things for my mum because I showed her some of mine and she borrowed one of mine and I said the local yarn shop stocks them but I didn't see them in there when I went down last week and they had a pack in Oslo and they're quite cheap some has gone sells a big pack. I don't know how many are in them, but there's loads. Um, and I really like those, so I bought her one of those.
I also went to the local yarn shop. There's a yarn shop. Oh, excuse the rustling. Uh, there's a yarn shop, um, two yarn shops in the town where my parents live. It's not that big a town. And it has two yarn shops. One I haven't been to the last three times I've been. Um, I don't find it that friendly. Um, one is in the shopping centre where my dad goes shopping every day. So I've went there. I've only been once this time. Okay, so in the local yarn shop, I bought a little bag like that which is very cute so i got some buttons which i was thinking about using for the cardigan i'm currently knitting which i'll talk about in a minute so they are little i don't know how easy it is to see them no, i think the light is not very good they're like sparkly lilac ones um and i got one of these little charms i got similar charms this before and i really don't know what to use it for but i thought it was cute like a little it's a ball of yarn with like a sheep's head and knitting needles stuck through it. So that was quite cute. So I just got that because it wasn't that expensive. Didn't buy any yarn there. I bought a wool comb. I have a big one um, from Gleamer. Gleamer? Gleamer, I think it is, which is really good. But I've seen these small ones. I wanted to see what they were like. So this is a Norwegian company called Forstel. I think they're special like in like wool soap and things. So because it was fairly cheap, I bought one and it's quite small, so I can easily fit it in my suitcase. And then I got a tape measure because you can never have enough of those. I have two of these um, in, I have a black one and brown one, I think. But this is the only one I've got that comes with a key ring. Probably won't use a key ring, but you can use this to clip it to your project bag or something. This I got in the local yarn shop called Garnlicke, and I'll show you the clip from there now. I also went to another yarn shop in another local town. We went shopping in a nearby town of She. It's got a big shopping centre there. It's very easily reached by train from Oslo. Um, like 20 minutes, I think, from Oslo. No, less than that, 10 minutes um, on the express train from Oslo. And the shopping centre is right next to the station. This particular shop called Nestemit, uh, Neste is uh, wool, 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 wool. Um, They also have shops in several places in Oslo, but not in Oslo city centre. By the way, if you come into Oslo on holiday, there are so many yarn shops in Oslo that even though I do recommend the one in She and the one in Vespi where my parents live, it's probably a bit far out of Oslo to go just to go to a yarn shop because there are so many yarn shops in Oslo. So I got one of these. I have these already. Uh, probably a different make. What are these? These are called Kort og Gott. Short and good. Anyway, that's what it means directly translated. Um, I have loads of these, but I've lost quite a few so i thought restocking them would be a good idea and it's something small that i can easily fit in my suitcase 49 seven of each color apparently um and then i also got some more buttons because my button stash is depleting rapidly so i got some of these sparkly ones these are the same ones i got in the local yarn shop except these are pink what i was thinking was maybe i'll mix the pink and the lilac ones for this cardigan i'm working on then I got some, I think these are like shell buttons. I don't know, coconut, I don't know what they are. Got some of those, the pink ones. And then I got some larger ones in purple. I used to always buy buttons when I went to yarn shows. I used to go to the uh, textile garden store because they used to always do all the shows I did and I'd just buy like 20 pounds worth of buttons. 
so I'd always have buttons for when I need them for magazine designs and stuff. Well, I haven't seen them at any shows since before COVID. I know they were at Unravel, but I wasn't at Unravel. So I miss them. So that's what I got at the local. Oh, I got one more thing. So I hadn't bought any yarn. I know I showed you the yarn board last night, but that was yesterday. So when I went to she, I hadn't bought any yarn yet. So I saw this sock yarn. Yes, it's neon pink. It's gorgeous. Looks really different on screen than it does. That's more the correct colour. Got the window coming in here. That's more the correct colour. So this will probably be sock. Maybe my Roseland socks. I haven't decided yet. I bought this because I thought if I finish a cow before I leave, I can custom prepare socks in it on the way home because it'll be a really long day tomorrow. We leave here, we catch the train at 10 past six. I don't get home till nearly 10 o'clock at night. So I'll have loads of time for knitting tomorrow. So um, I'm gonna pack this in my suitcase because I don't think I'm gonna finish the cow, and, but I'll pack it at the top. So on the train, if I finish the cow, I can just whip this out and knit on it. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you a little clip from the um, yarn shop in Shee now. Okay, so let's talk about the main project I've been working on while I've been here. So this has been the kind of project I've been working on in the flat while we've been at home. Um, I've got quite a lot done. I had hoped to finish it. I tried it on on the first few days we were here. So I'll show you that now, what it looked like when we got here. I haven't tried it on again um, since, but I'll show you what it looked like when we got here. Um, now, I, no, I've done a little bit, I think, of knitting probably about that much maybe and then I measured to see how much longer I would need it and when I met when I tried it on I had five full days left and I worked at how much I needed and I worked out I had to knit, knit like seven to eight centimeters a day and I think the most I've done is like four <laughs> so I'm not finished but I'll show you what it looked like a few days five days ago and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like now So this is what it looks like now. So I'll show you the back because it's easier to see because it's all worked in one piece. So I used one colour, purple one up here, and then different colour for these uh, cross stitches. And then I used one main colour, which is nearly run out. And we got that left. And then alternating between different mini skeins. I wasn't talk too much about it because I've talked a lot about it in recent podcasts. Um, I wish I'd actually striped the whole thing, so I wish I'd incorporated the mini skeins up here as well, but I didn't, and I'm running out of the main colour soon, so we'll see. I quite like it. It's going to be quite bright and cheerful cardigan. The sleeves at the moment are just before the elbow. I need to knit an edging on, and I would like long sleeves, or at least three-quarter lengths, but I don't know yet. Um, the yarn is Pixie Yarn, um, Superwash Merino Sock Yarn, I think and she's been closed the last few weeks because i think she's been away at a show and she's reopening i think this weekend so i might have a look and see if she's got any yarn so i would go with this because these are all one-off colorways so i might see if she has like a full size skein that would go with these colors and order that if she does and so i can get this finished when i get home i do have a yarn that's should have arrived for a, mag a magazine design which i have to finish fairly soon and i think i'm going to knit that myself rather than ask one of my sample knitters to do it because it's going to be a little bit more challenging so i think i need to do it myself to work it out um while i'm knitting it so even though i'd like to finish this like in the next week it may not happen but i will let you know next week on the podcast how far i get with it the yarn i've got left is these two from the Yule Solstice set. Oh, I've got one in here as well. These three from the Yule Solstice set. And then I have those two from the Spring Equinox set. And I've got those. 
So I brought a little yarn that I didn't really need, but never mind. I'm going to put this probably towards the top of my suitcase if I can. So that if I finish a cow on the train, I can either cause off the socks or if I feel like it, I can carry on with this. If I finish the cow before we get to London or while we're in London before I get on the train, I might pull this out and knit on that. If I manage to fit it at the top of my suitcase so I can get it out easily, but we'll see. <laughs> If you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing if you're already a subscriber thank you very much i appreciate it leave me a comment let me know what the quality like viewing quality is like um i think i'm talking quieter than i normally am because i'm aware of the fact that my dad and my daughter are in the room next door so if it's a little bit quieter than normal i apologize but hopefully you'll be able to hear me Thank you for watching and I will be back to normal next week. I'll see you next week. <laughs>